Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Uh, just a few things going on. Uh, first of all, Chris, Crystal is up at, at our two other Q congregations promoting Vacation Bible School this morning. But I want to thank and welcome everybody that is online with us. And uh, yesterday, uh, Andrew Lankford, Eddie Mayus, was ordained. And so I was there for part of that celebration. And uh, very fun to have another colleague now in the ordained ministry ranks as well. Uh, dinner, Wednesday night. 
Diane is here. It's, it's the last time she's cooking for us, at least for a while anyway. Um, I know, and so she promises hamburgers, uh, chicken burgers, or garden burgers uh, for the meal. Come, be a part of uh, her swan song is that, but she will be with us in worship often. So, uh, uh, forum today is uh, Gordon uh, Nadeki Nagai and close. <laughs> uh, Gordon Nadeki Nagai is uh, going to talk about his family's experience uh, with the internment camps. Uh, it's uh, Asian Pacific uh, month, uh, it's broader than that. I'm forgetting the whole name of the month, but, but we are recognizing some of those issues. And the social justice team wanted to remind us of, of some of this. So please come, be a part of a uh, forum. He's joining us actually via Zoom. You can also join us via Zoom if you're at home for that conversation of his family's uh, experience with that. Uh, Thomas Gustafson, the child of our congregation, um, is going to be graduating here, and then he was placed in a congregation in Michigan, and so uh, we will keep Thomas in our prayers moving forward these next couple weeks, as he will be ordained just in himself in about two weeks in the Missouri Synod Lutheran Church. Um, at this time... He's right here. We had an experience last weekend at the Senate Assembly, and John was one of our voting members there and representatives there. So, John, would you just stand up and say a few words? And do you have it's over there? Yeah, it's already that one's on. But, yep. Good morning. Good morning. So, yeah, this is my first experience at the Oregon Senate Assembly, and it was really really interesting, and I, I'm sure there's others here who have had the opportunity to do that. that um, so it was fascinating. The process is very interesting. Um, it's very formal. Um, all of our, our uh, churches were there in Oregon. Uh, really great representation, almost 300 people, so, and masked most of the time, especially in the assemblies that we were in. We had uh, many breakout sessions for studying the re resolutions and memorials that we were voting on. And so that was very important. We had six of those to vote on. I'm just gonna very briefly, there's a lot of pages there, and you are uh, certainly, we can send you the link to those if you'd like to read them. They all passed. The difference between a resolution and memorial is that a resolution is, is more immediate. The memorial is something that goes back to churchwide as a kind of a recommendation to them. They will work on it some more and it'll bounce back down so there was uh, several of those. The, briefly, the, the six of them, one was a resolution on forming um, an anti-racism resources network for the Oregon Synod. That's important, especially in light of what the talk is going to be today. The, um, the next one was a resolution on the type of Synod assemblies. They're going to move to a in-person three years instead of in-person every year. And that has a lot to do with just the expense of getting there. And so that, um, the next time probably won't be for a little while. They will have them, but only by Zoom. So, and then they did a, uh, <coughs> a reparations and land memorial. <coughs> a, a reparations and land return memorial. So that one is one that will go back up to churchwide. And that was, a, that was a little more contentious. And uh, it has to do with uh, the process of recognition of the lands that, that were taken from Native Americans in particular. The next one that we had was a resolution that was a inclusive call process to help make it that when the calls are done, that people are invited sooner into the process as the calls happen. As one person mentioned, uh, she was, uh, uh, she's, she's LGBTQ, and it took a long time for her to receive a call and that wasn't fair in the process. Um, there's a, a res let's see, this was a memorial, so this one goes back up to churchwide, and it had to do with re reducing greenhouse gases in particular. So that was a really important one. That one also was a bit contentious just because of including numbers and people trying to decide, do we really have to be so specific about the numbers? But because it's going up to churchwide, yeah, I think you can be specific, it's okay, because it's gonna be bounced back down, there'll be changes. And then finally, the one that was a bit contentious, 
had to do with a uh, working with Lift Every Voice Oregon Synod resolution <clears throat> to support IP17 and IP18. Those are initiative petitions that are being signed, and they have to do with gun ownership and um, also trying to close some of the large capacity and and other kinds of guns that are just kind of impractical for hunting. So um, you can imagine that was a bit contentious. So, um, but they all passed. And so the initiative petition, <coughs> excuse me, that one will be important because that'll be something that comes down to us eventually, petitions to be signed. If you end up signing it somewhere else, you don't need to sign it here. But if it does come here, you know, and you do sign it, then it will get onto the ballot in November. And like I was thinking as I was driving in, whether you agree with it or not, it's part of our initiative process, which is just part of our government process. So you can choose to sign it so it gets on there to be voted on or not. And when it comes around, if it gets on the ballot and you vote on it, you can vote for it or not. And even after it passes, there'll probably be legal pursuits of it. So it'll be a while before something really, truly happens with that. But in light of what happened in Buffalo, that very weekend while we were doing this process, I think it's terribly important to get it on the ballot. So thank, thank you very much for sending me, and um, I really appreciated the opportunity. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Oh, don't think he suffered too much. He was in Sun River, so he was <laughs> he was fine. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, we also had Patricia that was there um, observing things and, and being a part of it. And then Andrea Schofield was there as well. And, and Katie was there with me too. So, um, Also, just a note, uh, we are collecting um, resources for uh, new roads, uh, personal care items. That's in your bullets. And new roads is a ministry uh, that is dealing with uh, homeless youth and those who are, are suffering um, from some, some issues with homelessness at a younger age uh, to provide resources for them. So check that out. Bring them by next Sunday if you could, because then we will have a, a couple of us take those down, trying to continue to learn more about what that ministry is about. Any other announcements for the good of this community this day? Seeing none. Yeah, I was going to announce the, the, the hymn. Um, oh, one more. Uh, oh, okay. Besides Philip. Please, for our opening hymn, we forgot to print the chorus. So if you go into your ELW to uh, hymn 364, you'll have the whole thing there. We forgot to print the second page, which I'm supposed to be checking, and I forgot to. So please stand as we sing this hymn as you are able.
Together, let us pray. Father of God, you gather your people into the realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world be thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside by the gate up by the river, for we were supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Tirethia and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the psalm, I'll read the entire thing. If you would please join the back May Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth and your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessings, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. The second reading is from the book of Revelations, chapter 21. And in the spirit of one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light and its light lamp is the lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring it into glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of light. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. online, but uh, Wendy has agreed to be uh, my child this morning. So. <laughs> uh, a quick refresher course. There's Father God who made everything and is in everything. There's the Son, Jesus, who God sent to save the world and us. And when Jesus went back to be with God, he said, I will send you the Holy Spirit, sort of uh, the mothering Holy Spirit to help you out and to guide you and to be with your uh, communities and with you individually. As a matter of fact, I'll put the Holy Spirit right inside you so you always have it so you won't be orphaned. I'll be your advocate and help you with counsel and comfort. Which is a good thing, because imagine if we didn't have the Holy Spirit. Hey, Jesus, you're, you're going to be with God. Where are you going? You're leaving me all alone. And that is not the case. We have the Holy Spirit. So God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Who, again, helps us remember what Jesus taught, helps comfort us, and counsel us. A, a quick story have you ever done anything good for maybe somebody and you, you kind of thought, wow, where, how come I did that? Where did that come from? Yesterday, Sandy and I, if you know anything about us, you know we like to go to estate sales. Uh, and we have a distinction. Sometimes a garage sale is people selling their junk. An estate sale, maybe someone moves to a, a retirement home can't take all their stuff, so you go to an estate sale in the house, and what's left is for sale. It's a lot of fun. We were at a sale yesterday, and it was packed, the house, there was a bunch of people, and I noticed a little boy, maybe seven years old, had a baseball in his hand that was in a wrapper, and it was a brand new white baseball, <laughs> and his mom and sister and sister-in-law or whatever, they were shopping, and the mom had some stuff, and the little boy held out the baseball and the mother said put it back you've got lots of balls at the house and he said it's only a dollar and she said put it back his face went kind of blue and he walked back over and and put it on a table <coughs> finished walking through the sale with his family well I couldn't stand it I saw his face so I went to Sandy and said give me a dollar <laughs> She gave me a dollar, I went and found the baseball, <laughs> went up to the little kid, handed him the baseball and the dollar, which was a dollar coin, as a matter of fact, and his face lit up, a smile, and he said, thanks. And his mom said something, oh, how sweet, or something like that. Well, I just turned and walked away. What was it that made me do that? I think it's the Holy Spirit. We were having a discussion the other day. Uh, Bob and Shirlene live in a, a community with people, and there was an issue with the fence, and Bob dug in, you know, and kind of helped resolve, and Shirlene and some other people took a petition around, and they were kind of, gee, what, what makes us help others? What makes us do that? The Holy Spirit. The other day, Pastor Eric was talking about one of our members, or at least a gentleman that comes from time to time in a wheelchair, Bill Grepler. Uh, Bill needs a hand, maybe being walked to church. He has an a electric uh, wheelchair, but he needs some help. So we're talking about, well, let's, we got to figure out a way to help Bill get here. And what makes us do that? The Holy Spirit, almost think of it as God's vaccination. Maybe you got your boosters and stuff for COVID, but infuses us with the Holy Spirit. And if you listen, and if you watch and think and listen to that Holy Spirit, it will urge you on to do good things for others, generally. Sometimes for yourself, you need that too, but for others. So... We give thanks for the Holy Spirit, 
Because there's no kids, I'll wait until the next time there are, but I had a little a book uh, for each one of them in the sense that, well, how will I recognize the Holy Spirit? Sometimes it's a little difficult. Sometimes it comes in music. Sometimes it comes in a lesson or a message. Sometimes it comes from one of us. Sometimes in a little book. My first book of prayers. So I'm going to give these to the kids so they remember to pray each day, thank God for Father God, Son Jesus, and the mothering Holy Spirit. Be with me through the day. Now before I run to play, let me not forget to pray to God who kept me through the night and waked me with the morning light. Amen. Amen. So say a quick prayer with me. Gracious God. Gracious God. Thank you. Thank you. For the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and thanks to Wendy for playing the role of children. <laughs> Please stand as you are able. It always helps if you put the, the mask on after you put the microphone on. <laughs> wow. As the assistant, is there anything I can assist you with? <laughs> Some people are beyond help, Mark. Right. Eric, you're just too honest. <laughs> The Holy Gospel according to John, and I'm going to start uh, in chapter 14, verse 18. So the first part will not be uh, in your bulletin. Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you in a little while. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Now Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word. And my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you will rejoice, and I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks. Towards the beginning of her book on Christianity after religion, published in 2012, Diane Butler Bass shares a conversation she had with a seatmate on a plane who said, I don't go to church anymore. I'm not mad at the church or anything. I appreciate what it gave me when I was young, but I just don't know where it fits anymore. And I just drifted away. My life is full without church. It seems kind of irrelevant. 
They don't care about my questions. There's really no reason to go. Well, when she went on to ask what the questions that mattered were, he continued by responding, no oh, doubt, life, making the world a better place, you know. Questions they seem interested in and things, the questions I'm interested in don't really matter. Church, he thought, was disconnected from real life. So it got me thinking, of course, what do you think? Are we connected to real life here at United? Are we responding to the needs of community and individuals? I do invite you to take note. Uh, Patricia wrote a wonderful article for the social justice team to help you know what we've been involved with, to try to get you to think about it as well. Also, I'm doing an article that's getting us to think about what community truly means, to think about how we foster that community. At council, we talked about the question, maybe in our fall push, we need to say united for community. You see, the work is done in our gospel, not for you just as individuals, <laughs> but for us as a community. Social justice is just one of the ways we work to stay relevant. My guess is that you are here either joining us online or in person because you want to deal with questions that are relevant to our lives. I know that's one of the reasons I became a pastor. And it's an honor to be invited into conversations with folks that deal with life and death doubt and belief and questions about how to make the world a better place. As I read our gospel story for today, I was reminded of one of those conversations. You see, a few years ago, I was talking with a parishioner of mine about the experience of losing her second parent. Tears formed in her eyes when she shared with me, I never knew I would feel like an orphan when my parents die. It was a feeling that I experienced also shortly after when my dad died. It makes me wonder, what keeps us grounded when those who are nearest and dearest to us die? How do we deal with death is just one of the questions that we as a community at United need to continually consider. And as we consider, we will see that even when we are parentless, God never, ever leaves us orphaned. But we continue to be surrounded by a spirit who teaches us how to love as Jesus loved. So as you heard, I began reading our gospel today from the 18th verse of chapter 14. And Jesus is talking about his pending death and his exodus from the world. He's just prophesied, prophesied his betrayal by Judas, who has gone out to put things in motion. And then Jesus tells us he has gone to prepare a place for us and then says these words. I am not leaving you orphans. I am coming to you, coming to you all. Do you hear this, though, more individually? Or do you hear it communally? Maybe you know my bias by now. I care less about your personal relationship with Jesus and more about your communal relationship. With Jesus. Sometimes I'll say that more colorfully. But as we read our gospel today, we hear the promises of divine presence, our promises made to the community, not just to individuals. We're so individualistic in our society. All the personal pronouns in our reading today are second person plural, they're not singular. So if we lived in the South, I will not leave you all orphans. 
I am coming to all you all. I'm coming to you all, all the time. All this got me thinking, how does it change things that Jesus is talking to the community of followers? How does it change things that Jesus promises to send the spirit, the advocate of the community to live at all communities that continue to live in love? And how are we doing to that end? Jesus began his whole farewell discourse with the words you heard in last week's gospel that Ray preached on. Today, Jesus expands that command and puts in a promise. The promise is that as you go on your journey, Jesus will give you some peace. And my advocate, the Holy Spirit, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said. Philip loved those words so much that he's put it to music for us today. First, though, that peace is not the world's peace. Sometimes when we think of peace, we want a time without anxiety or any worry. Jesus' peace is not a false promise of security or the end of conflict. It's also not a, an occasion for complacency. Jesus gives an imperative, and really, literally what Jesus is saying today is do not let your hearts be cowardly. Do not let them be afraid. Do not let them be cowardly. I will not leave you orphaned. It is the Holy Spirit that will continue to teach us what this all may, means through one another, through the creation that God has given. So what do you imagine the Spirit might be trying to teach us today? What ways are we called to love as Jesus loved? I just want to share a few thoughts that I have of where the Holy Spirit may be nudging us. First of all, we are invited to care deeply. Care deeply about the questions that troubled the disaffected Christian we heard about at the beginning of my sermon. Next, let's acknowledge people's doubt about church teachings. When it comes to things these days about sex and marriage, about connections to political and economic systems that create division and oppression. Enter into those conversations. And then be open to the messiness of life in our community, where children suffer from crippling anxiety. Women still face violence at work and in the home. And people struggle to find housing and work because our systems place profit above human dignity. Prove that we are committed to making a world a better place, our world a better place. And how might we do this? Could we, could we organize advocacy campaigns for refugees? <laughs> Might we look to sell our property known as the intern house to a group such as Habitat for Humanity and see if we can't create a win-win-win for neighbors and congregations and our future intern program? As we engage in these questions out of love, the Holy Spirit will teach us and we will learn. We will continue to be relevant and we will discover what the Prince of Peace, what Jesus is all about. Be courageous. Be empowered by the Spirit to be vitally and compassionately connected to real life then we surely will be connected to the God 
for the love of the whole world was revealed through Jesus in this manner. Well, those are some of my thoughts. But what are your thoughts? Your questions and thoughts are welcome here. May you have the courage to say them and act them out. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, continue to keep your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus, who continues to teach and advocate for all of us. Amen. 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 Please stand as we confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church. We pray for people in need and we pray for all creation. God of new life, Open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. Bring your peace to Ukraine, Russia, and all areas ravaged by war. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give safe haven to those who seek healing, 
liberation, and peace. Today, we pray for Food for Lane County's dining room. We pray for Katrina, daughter-in-law of Alan and Christine, for Dale Rettman under hospice care. We continue to pray for Juniper Vold and her journey with type 1 diabetes. For those suffering from depression and anxiety, we offer prayers for Lowell Nelson, who's on hospice care. We pray for Bill Greppler and for our upcoming intern, Daniel O'Brien, as he prepares to join us. For what else do the people of God pray? For Pete, Harriet, and Mary. We pray for our niece, Anna, as she begins her missionary work in Thailand. Uh, for niece Anna, as she begins her missionary work. Mm -hmm. For my son and granddaughters. For Wendy's son and granddaughters. For my the nephew. Of for the people of Ukraine. For my nephew, Avery, who's graduating from high school next for Avery, who graduated from high school. For my sister, Janine. Say again. My sister, Janine. For uh, sister, Janine. Courage for my friend, Pam. Courage for our friend, Pam. For Kyle, as he goes back on the kidney donation list. for recovering uh, from mental illness, especially for teenage children. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people, especially the Eugene Mission, Shelter Care, and New Roads. Accomplish your will through their efforts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray with thanksgiving for Jenna Kruger, Jordan Pickrell, and Michelle Dodd, whose baptismal anniversaries are this week. For what else do the people of God give thanks? For the children of United and all the children in our lives. For the children of United and all of the children in our lives. For good friends. We give thanks for good friends. For first responders and all who serve in the military and their families. For first responders and all those who serve in the military and their families. For ride share? Lessons learned through hardship. Lessons learned through hardship. Uh, lessons learned through hardship. Good. Yes. For words that inspire and encourage us. For words that inspire and encourage us. And I would add actions too. For those who fight for justice. For those who fight for justice. We give thanks for that group. For the birth of Camden Dean to Mark and Lindsay. For Andrea's and John's new granddaughter. For the loving, generous, and accepting members of the United. For the loving, generous, and accepting members of United. You all. <laughs> Y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, <laughs> for the ordination of Andrew Langford and the coming ordination of Thomas Gustafson. And, and remember, white kid from Oregon City, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts where we remember our baptism 
and welcome others in the communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died when we welcome, uh, when we meet rather together at the river of life. God, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayers. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Jesus be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace one with another. That's peace, sweetheart. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach, Reach out to us through this, this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us 
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Our Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We will commune this way but in two stations on each side. I ask that you come through the center aisle and just make your way to the station that's open. And as you receive the, the bread, know that there's a gluten-free option and grape juice also located in the center of the tray. Jesus will not leave you orphaned. This is the body of Christ and the blood of Christ given and shed for you. Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. For you, the good. body of Christ. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This 
This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. For you, the body of Christ. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. For you, the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ given for you. Wow. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. For you, the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. For you, for you, the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Stay there, Mark. Okay. We'll go there. And, we'll go there at the end. Go. Did you guys do it? For okay. <laughs> you, uh, the body of Christ. Body of Christ. You be there. Given for you. Did she get you, Mark? <laughs> blood of Christ shed for you. We gotta figure this out. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood, may it strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup, we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, and through our lives, all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, wait, okay. Let's do verses 1, 3, and 5.
May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sybilis. Help me. We'll believe the chalice.